All right, we're here today with Morgan Wade, country music artist. Uh, I'm just excited that I didn't say Morgan Wallen or Whalen. I always forget. <laughs> <laughs> I was like so nervous I was going to do that <laughs> in the first ten seconds. <laughs> well, you, you got you got the right name, so we're we're on track. <laughs> all right, all right, we're on track. Um, Anyways, yeah, Morgan's a country music artist based out of Nashville, Tennessee, but originally from Southern Virginia, so not not too far from the mid, our mid Atlantic neck of the woods here in Maryland. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on the podcast. I'm really excited to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, you're coming out with a new album soon called Psychopath, and um, let's just start off with that real quick um how how excited are you for for that to come out in a couple weeks yeah i'm ready i'm ready for the new record to come out you know we've been (laughs) touring uh reckless the the debut record for i don't know two three years now something like that so it's it's time to uh start playing some new songs oh yeah um i mean yeah, Reckless, uh, Reckless was such an awesome album. It's one of it's probably one of my favorite albums of last year in general, or when I at least started listening to it last year. And um, it's interesting because I was listening to it, then went on your Instagram, and I saw that you were kind of you're into run. Clearly, you're into uh, lifting, working out, staying healthy. But I also saw that somewhere you signed up for a hundred mile race, yeah. or at least at least an ultra marathon. Is that is that still the case? Is that still in the works? Yeah, in in November. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm running that the first weekend in November. So. Um, oh man. I I would like to say I'm excited, but I'll get back to you when it's done to to let you know I'm excited. I've <laughs> right. I've done uh I've done a few of the like the six hour races and you know some of the like three hour and I've done uh, 150 miler and like 350 k's, but uh, it's yeah. It's been a minute since I've been touring, since I've been able to like run an actual race. So. Yeah, yeah. So when you are touring, how do you end up kind of either running or staying fit? Because I know that's a huge part of your life. So, And I know just like with touring and going from city to city, it's kind of chaotic and hectic and not a real a real schedule. So how do you, how do you keep up on that and make sure you're doing that all the time? I mean, I work out every day. Uh you know, I keep weights and stuff on the on the bus, like in the trailer, just in case. Mm-hmm. Like we were in Montana, a place in Montana this past weekend, and you know, there wasn't the option to go to a gym down the road, so I had my weights and stuff there. And there was literally a trail, so I was able to go run on the trail and, and lift nice. weights. But you know, whether now there's some cities and stuff I go to where it's like I've got to run on the treadmill. So I'm like, I don't know the area, or it's not very right. safe. But, you know, the, the past couple of weeks, we've been, you know, Colorado and, and Montana and uh, up in Washington. And so I've been able to hit, you know, a trail uh, every single time we've, we've been out there. So that's been really nice to, to be able to do yeah. that. But sometimes you got to do, you got to do what you got to do. And <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, you, you get a little creative. Now, does anyone else in your crew run along with you, or you kind of go in out on your own? No, I, my bass player he likes to. Uh, we'll we'll go on like walks together and stuff like that too. But mm-hmm. the guys will go. They'll go with me to the gym, and uh, they'll run on the treadmill and stuff like that. But if it's like long runs, I'm I'm usually yeah. I'm on my own on that one. But <laughs> gotcha. if if it's if it's an area that I'm like not familiar with or. You know, I talk to someone, they're like, ah, it's not like the safest for you to be out running by yourself. I'll just, I just have to suck it up and do it on the treadmill. Yeah. Man, the treadmill is the worst though. It's. <laughs> yeah. When it, you know, I'll, uh, I, or I'll, I'll do the thing where I'll run a loop and it's like, you know, I get <laughs> a quarter mile loop and I know that I can run this area, but I hate like in the cities, you know, if you've got to like run, stop, run, stop, run, stop. I'm like, I'd just rather do it on the treadmill. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, stoplights in the city is definitely the worst because it just breaks up the whole rhythm of running, basically. One hundred percent. What's your, been one of your favorite places to run that you've maybe like seen or just kind of been able to experience? Uh, well, honestly, 
there there was like in Spokane there was a great greenway that I got on, mm. and I I don't know I guess it was just. It, you know, it wasn't any different than any other Greenway, but it, it, I don't know, there was something about it when we got up there, I kind of had just, it had been such a long week, and to be able to go yeah. hit up a Greenway like that, but God, everywhere out in like Montana, and oh, uh, yeah. like when we were out in, uh, it was Bozeman, Montana, I hit oh, a trail yeah. out there, and I just love how a lot of these like cities and, and, uh, Stuff they're they're really starting to do the whole rail to trail thing and all these really For cool sure. trails are, are popping up. So, you know, the last time we toured out there, it was like super cold, so I wasn't necessarily <laughs> able to. I wasn't out just walking around very much. Right. So it's been nice to like go back in the warmer weather and be able to hit all these trails up. Nice, yeah, because you're from Southwest Virginia and Floyd, and is that I can't remember is that near the Creeper Trail? Is that down that way? So I actually I have a house uh, right near the Creeper Trail that I actually oh, own. Nice. Uh, yeah, and so yeah, that's Damascus into Abingdon, Virginia. Yeah, that's right. and so my, my friends own a lot of property and and rental vacation homes right there. So that's actually okay. where I started running was on the Creeper Trail. Uh, oh, nice. With, yeah, with with those guys out there and and uh, it's that that's my that's always going to be my favorite trail because I just. When I when I'm at, in Virginia, I just walk on that trail yeah. like all day. It's just so nice. Yeah, I mean, there's something about that where I don't know if it's just like a home trail or kind of just something you're used to. And it feels yeah. different. I mean, I know like Colorado and everything's beautiful, but sometimes just running, you know, where you're from and the trails that you kind of know, I feel like that's yeah. it feel, I feel like that's meaningful. One hundred percent. I I love when I'm able to go home and go. Go run. I know. I know the trail. I know what I'm doing. I know how I'm gonna feel. So, you know, no sneak, yeah. no sneaky rocks or anything around there. I mean, I'm still, <laughs> right. still eating the ground a few times, but yeah, that, that the is the one problem with with going out by myself. And when I was in Bozeman the other day, I got on like a little single trail, and uh, I tripped over a rock pretty pretty <laughs> quick up into there. And I was like, all right, we need to go back where there's more. <laughs> There's more people when you're up here with no cell service by yourself. That That's not, we don't need to be breaking an arm up here. Oh, yeah. And out west, it's like, I feel like there's even more, it's, there's wildlife that you actually have to think about. Because cause in, in the east coast, it's like, um, I mean, a black bear sighting, they're pretty chill usually. But out west, there's mountain lions and crazy stuff. Yeah, when I got up in there, uh, it was somewhere, it was like on a bay in Montana. It was like you could look over and see uh, Canada right there. Oh, yeah. And I got up to the top, and there's all these grizzly bear signs. And I was like, yeah, that makes me feel really yeah. comfortable being up here by myself. So. Seriously, though. I mean, just, uh, I saw, I read an article last week where that, I think there was a runner. Yeah, it was in, um, I think it was in Yellowstone. Yeah, it was in Yellowstone. Um that got attacked by a grizzly like that just found a person which is i mean it's a real thing you know like yeah. but anyways not to bring it down so much but now, <laughs> i'm just saying we're done. okay on that note <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying i like i'm just saying i like the east coast uh and I, i'm happy with sticking to these trails mm -hmm. but yeah <laughs> agreed um so how'd you actually get into running because I know, um, I think you've been sober now for, is it seven years or something like that? Uh, six. Yeah, six years. Six years? Okay. Yeah. So was that, it was running that came, is something that came out of that, or was it just part of your journey, like, later on in life? Like, how did it happen? Yeah, you know, I got, I got healthy, um, and, and really, I've always, I've always worked out, but I, like, really okay. started taking it seriously, and then. Within the last two years, the whole lifting got very serious for me. But yeah. it was about, it was 2019. I think it was right before, yeah, right before COVID. Um, okay. That summer that I really got into running. And it, I had went to Damascus, and um, my friends helped put on a 100-mile race. And they were involved in all these races. And I had no, I'd never heard of a 100-mile race. I literally was like, I thought it went to a marathon, and that was it. You know, I'd never heard of ultra running. Yeah. And so I was like, what? I was like, that is stupid. 
And then, like, a week later, I went and bought some running shoes because it bothered me in a way that I was. There's something like that that's extreme that it bothered me so much, I guess, because I was like, you need to try that. Like, what, what's, what the hell is this yeah. shit? And so yeah, yeah. I uh, ended up buying a pair of running shoes, and I signed up for a six-hour race. And, like, a month later, went and ran, like, 28 miles. And uh, What? Are you serious? That, you're, like, yeah. the literal... You're like the opposite of what normal people do. It's usually, oh yeah, I'll go do a 5K local charity 5K, not a six hour race. No, I was like, let's, and everybody was like, maybe you should. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, you're going to get yourself hurt. And then, of course, everyone was surprised because I went out. And I'm not, I, by any means, like, I'm not fast. I go at my own pace. Right. And that was the thing for me is I was like, and that's what I liked so much about these ultra races is because everybody they're going at their own pace it, it everybody's supportive you see all kinds of different types of people out there it's not like it's oh, not yeah. like going to do your your local 5k where you got the really tall skinny guy who <laughs> runs it in you know two seconds and and you know it's it's literally like you know everybody's cheering each other on and like it's it's not like it doesn't feel like a race to me it feels more like right if you're focusing on yourself and that's one of the the best things i like about it is i'm not out there to compete i'm just like all right i want to finish this i want to do this you know i set little goals for myself but it's such a mental thing once you get to a certain point you know oh, during sure. ultra races and there's so many people that i've met that you know, or sober, they've had addiction issues that are out there. It seems like it's like a lot of, a lot of misfits out there. And I love yeah. it. You know, it's just a very welcoming, it's a very welcoming environment for sure. No, that's what I definitely love about trail, trail running and trail racing. I mean, sometimes it's even hard to say it's racing for, for a lot of people. I feel like it's, I feel like it's just that getting it done kind of thing and, yeah. and enjoying the camaraderie of it. And, um, yeah. And just like obviously being out in nature is a great part about it too but oh, sure. yeah just i think it's just a different vibe altogether that's really kind of refreshing i think yeah agreed so what what uh what's the 100 miler that your friends uh that you know put on they they helped with the uh the yeti 100 oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so okay I'll that's yeah that's a big one that a lot of uh um a lot dude, what's the dude's name who runs that i always forget his uh name. jason green yeah, yeah, Jason Green. Yeah, because yeah, I used to listen to the um, the podcast. Um, uh, what's the one with Sean? Um, what's his name? Anyways, yeah, I'm, why am I blanking out right now? I used to listen to podcasts, the one show running podcast, and Jason Green. They usually have them on talking about it all the time. And I know uh, the Damn Yeti and the uh, Yeti 100. It's like kind of both pretty popular. Yeah, yeah, a lot of. Uh a lot of folks, you know, they come around and, and Damascus, you know, is such a good a good place to, to run those races for yeah. sure. So and you know, I the one I I found the only hundred mile race that I could run this year and it's it's actually I keep calling it a hundred mile race. It's the thirty you've got thirty hours, you know. Oh, okay. So right. that's my goal is to be able to you know hit 100 miles uh in the in the 30 hour and i was glad you know it it ended up working out it's on a loop um oh nice so i don't have to worry with that being my first one i was like all right i can have i can have camp set up and keep you know coming through yeah. so i'm happy to be able to do that one and hopefully it'll be the first of many but i'm just yeah trying to man that's exciting so are you are, are you feeling pretty good about it right now as far as like training and just like get in some miles and stuff yeah and you know i i'm on my feet i try to stay on my feet all day you know i, oh, yeah. I lift for about two and a half three hours every morning so i kind of like adding that in and with the races that i've done previously one of the biggest issues i've had was like my shoulders hurting so that's been like oh, a big right. thing for me to make sure i'm training my shoulders uh yeah really good kind of like build that up um so I'm not as sore getting in the miles in my shoulders, which was weirdly like my biggest my biggest issue. And so I'm kind of just trying to kind of calculate all that in a little bit, where I'm like, all right, I'm the main thing for me is to just be up and moving because I know I'm gonna walk a lot. And I was like, I'm not sure. going to be upset with myself if I have to walk the whole damn thing, you know? Like that's yeah, that's you know what I'm gonna do. And uh, so 
Yeah, I, I did what you were saying. It's hard to call it running. Sometimes I read the, <laughs> the thing. It was like ultra running, basically fast hiking, or you know something <laughs> like that, like fast yeah, yeah. walking. And, and I'm totally, I'm totally cool with that. Um, you know, I know a lot of people that they don't stop hardly at all. But I was like, yeah, I'm not, not gonna be that, not gonna be that. <laughs> excited to be able to uh to no that's the nice thing about yeah about trail running is like it's almost admired if you stop or if you like power hike an uphill or something stop at an aid aid station for 15 minutes eat some like bacon and pierogies and handfuls of m&ms right (laughs) and i you eat the most like random stuff i did uh there's a trail in in damascus it's called the iron mountain and i did that one and uh Probably wouldn't do that one again just because uh, it was pretty. It was great race, but I was like, it straight down. I was oh, like, man. I, break, I, I get kind of nervous about breaking something because I'm like, if I break a hand, <laughs> I can't really work. Um, yeah, you're and right. <laughs> so, but I just remember it was like five miles up the Creeper Trail, and then you like cut across and ran out and then back down. But I remember coming up on that aid station and just a ham and cheese sandwich was probably like, it tasted like heaven to me. It was like oh, yeah. that and like watermelon or like what, just like the most random, you're eating gummy bears and all kinds of like random stuff that I would never like. And I was like, oh my yeah. God, I'm so gourmet right now. It's wild when you're doing an endurance event or something like that and your body's just craving like literally anything salty or sweet. And the, like the most mundane of foods, you can get a Totino's pizza or something and it's going to taste like like the best pizza you've ever had oh absolutely and that one i just that was one that uh because a lot of those races that i have done have been like on loops which i kind of appreciated because it was like easier than having to carry everything with me um yeah and you know i have a crew and all that stuff going on so when i did that one that was 16 miles it was like i didn't have anything with me, so when I hit that yeah. one eight station, I was oh, like, yeah. all right, let's fucking load up right here. So. <laughs> yeah, right on. Oh, man, that's the best. That's cool. Yeah, that's exciting to, I mean, to do your first 100-miler. I mean, that seems like a huge goal. I feel like, you know, whatever you do, even if you go further than you've ever done before or whatever, I think it's going to be an awesome, awesome yeah. time. Yeah, my, my, my biggest thing is, like, stretching right now. I've never been a big stretcher. Mm. Yeah. And that's that's an issue my hip flexors have become sorry somebody sneezed in here i don't know if you picked that up so that's great little background noise right there oh it's it's cool yeah yeah god <laughs> ruin we'll turn it. that we'll turn that right up make sure that's yeah, in just there make that really later. loud that should be like the intro music um yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but like my hip flexors that's been like the biggest the biggest issue for me i think is oh yeah i stretch and so bad about stretching and yeah i'm pretty sure everyone is it's the worst warming up and stretching and foam rolling it's like who wants to who wants to do that crap like i, I never want to do it and then when i'm hurting i'm like oh, morgan we got to get in this so now i'm like totally gonna be foam rolling every day just carry yeah. everywhere yeah you just have to um uh, so how when you're performing at night how many like how long are your sets usually uh so we're we're typically like 75 to 90 minutes it's generally about 90 minutes so okay i mean that's another thing that people don't think about is an hour and a half of performing is like that's a freaking workout in itself you know see i've never like thought about it in that way but then um like then i realized i was like i kept my apple watch on one night and then i was like oh you are getting quite quite a (laughs) steps and especially like being out west with the elevation i mean it's like 900 in virginia and then i was in colorado and it was what like 9,000 out in aspen so like trying to sing i was like oh my gosh like this is totally this is 100 percent a workout um i never even thought about that yeah about the singing part because i i was out in boulder a couple weeks ago and it was yeah like the elevation man it really hits you hard but I never even thought about the singing part for artists and stuff. Like if you're playing Red Rocks or somewhere out there, like that, that's an interesting, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The the elevational. Uh, you, I didn't think about it until I was like out there, and we had a show last tour, and it we were in Denver. I went and ran like six miles, and I was like, "This is the most pathetic six miles I've ever ran." I was like, "What is wrong with you?" And then I didn't feel very good at all. 
And then I went to play harmonica that night, and I was like, what the hell? And then the guys were like, the elevation. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I totally, <laughs> I just totally forgot, but I felt horrible all day. It was like, you are so out of shape. Like, what is wrong with you? And oh, then, yeah. Like, okay, elevation. That makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do it for sure. Um, yeah, so you're uh, tour. So are you on tour right now? Are you just in in Ma- Nashville or what? Yeah, yeah. We're. I had. Uh, I'm, I'm in Nashville right now. We had a show uh, Sunday in Aspen, and then I flew back to Nashville okay. last night. And so, and then I'll head uh, do some work here, and then head to Chicago on Thursday for Lollapalooza. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I mean, and so when is the official tour for Psychopath? Uh, when does that start? Uh, it's, it's gonna be you're sometime. Like, I, yeah, you're like I'll ask my manager. I have no idea. Well, that is true. I'm thinking spring, like <laughs> probably spring of next year. I mean, I'm going hard until the end of October, and then November fourth, I run my race, and then November ninth, right. I have my pre-op and. On the 18th of November is when I have my double mastectomy. And then, uh, so I have the rest of the year off. And then I've got like a couple shows in January and I think maybe a couple in February. And then um, pick back up in the spring for the Psychopath Tour. Right on. Can you talk a little bit about the double mastectomy? Because I know that's something you've been, that's kind of weighing on you. And I've seen you post about that on Instagram. Maybe like give a little more information for everyone. Yeah, so... um, my aunt was 30 when she got breast cancer, and she had a double mastectomy, and uh, thankfully it's all good, but she she got tested for the RAD51D gene, um, mm-hmm. and she tested positive for that, so that means we can't, it's like a one, and I don't want to quote, I don't want to be, mis, I don't want to misquote it, but it, it's a very large chance of getting ovarian right. cancer as well as breast cancer. Mm-hmm. So my mom had the, gen- the the genetic testing done. She has it, and my cousin got it, and, and she has it as well. Wow. So my mom was like, you need to get tested. Of course, I obviously didn't want to do that. Um, it was <laughs> right. easy. Yeah, they sent, I talked to the doctor. I spit in the test tube, mailed it in, and in two weeks he called me and was like, hey, you had the gene. I was like, all right. And uh, so, yeah, so basically – with with my age uh being 28 it kind of creeping up you know a little closer to my aunt's age when she got breast cancer so it's just honestly a peace of mind the doctors i mean he he was like listen it's not really a matter of if it's more so when and i don't Mm -hmm. want you know i'm like okay why not take that step go ahead have that to me and then i don't have to worry about it you know i don't have to worry um, when my mom had, you know, her breast removed, they found some cancerous tissue in there. So it was good that she went ahead and had that done because she would have ended up with breast cancer. Oh, for sure. So, right. it, you know, it's, I'm like, all right, I'm, I have this knowledge. I was shown this and so I'm going to go ahead and follow through and I'll do the whole egg retrieval um, as well because eventually I'll have my ovaries mm-hmm. removed and, and do all that as well. I'm not quite sure when I'll do that yet. Um, I don't have to worry about that as soon, but... You know, and then I don't have to worry about it. I can have that peace of mind and not be yeah. not be stressing. No, I think that's awesome. I think it's you know, obviously, it's, I'm sure it's a hard decision, but just to you know take control of kind of your health and be able to do that, I think it's. I mean, that's it's definitely cool. Like it's a cool thing about science, I guess. And now that like, that you're able to do that and not, you know, even I don't even know how long you've been able to do that, but just being able to ha- make that choice is pretty awesome. Oh, 100%. Um, and I think, like, kind of along those lines, I feel like a lot of, um, I don't know, girls and women look up to you because you're just, like, kind of somebody who's making moves in country music. I feel like that's, you know, looks a little different than a traditional country music artist. You're all tatted up and have sleeves and, like, basically look like a female version of Travis Barker. Um, but <laughs> That's my favorite compliment so far. Seriously. <laughs> nice. so. Awesome. Yeah, and by the way, also probably my favorite drummer, uh, one of the most amazing drummers out there. Um, But I do think, like, just, you know, you look different than the average country music artist, and especially in country music, it's like there's this weird thing where I feel like 
I don't understand it, and maybe you can shed some light since you're in the industry, why there's so few female or women country music artists, especially on country music radio. Like, I'll look at the country charts all the time, and it's like 35 like male artists, like five. It's like you, like Laney Wilson, L. King. Like, there's a handful right now. But then it almost seems like a lot of times they just end up going over to pop. Like, I mean, you've seen it with Taylor Swift, Casey Musgraves, Mary Morris, all these artists, because it almost seems like they're blackballed in a way. And I don't get it, and I don't understand why it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I had an answer for that one as well. Um, I mean, it, 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 I mean, what you're saying is true. I mean, you can't – that – no one can deny that. I mean, you look at it, and if you go and listen, there'll be, like, ten songs played in a row, and, like, nine of those are going to be guys, and it's going to be, like, one female. And, yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know why that is, and it, and it makes sense and that a lot of females do leave, and they go do their own thing. Um, and it sucks because there's so many amazing female country singers that aren't getting the recognition that they deserve. Right. And it, it seems like for some reason they'll only keep a few females in rotation on that. And I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of times I feel like they don't know what to do with me. You know, I'm so... <laughs> yeah, I bet. I'm not really, you know, I'm not re- they're not really sure how to take me, and I'm totally fine with that because, you know, I'm like, whatever. It, it is what it yeah. is. Um, you know, I think things are changing anyways and mm-hmm. everything, you know, we're, we're streaming. Most people stream stuff yeah. anyways. And, and uh, it, I mean, it, I think that's, shit, but, you know. yeah, I think that's what's a little bit refreshing about it is that now that there's more streaming and, and other ways to go about it, that you can get your name out there and you don't have to rely on, you know, uh, hitting up the country music stations and like doing the little song and dance routine with everyone at all the uh all the buyers and everything and making sure that you can get in get in the right places i feel like if like you have that a b option now where it's like look you don't want to if you don't want to work with me you don't want to play my music like screw i'll just do my own thing and you can pave your own way and fortunately you know too i've met you know i had to do the like the radio tour stuff for wilder days and i met some really awesome you know DJs oh, for sure. That, that, yeah, no, that were like, we're playing Wilder Days, and, and there was like some of them that were playing other stuff, just throwing, you know, I mean, there was there was one radio uh, guy, and he, he was out in Colorado, and he was like, I, w- I want to play Matches and Metaphors so bad. Like, that's like my favorite song oh, nice. on the record. And so I met some like really, really cool people, and then, you know, but you're going to have the ones that for some unknown reason don't like you even though they've never met you, and it, it is what it is, and so it, it was kind of interesting to see, you know, that whole thing, but my main thing is it's like if people like the music, they'll figure out a way to hear it, whether yeah. it's on the radio or they're they're playing it on Spotify or Amazon, Apple Music, whatever, like if they like it, they're going to they're gonna play it, and they're going to come to your shows, and they're going to buy your physical CD yeah. just to have whether you know they play it in their car yeah and it's still cd but in a lot of ways i feel like if people find you that way too there you you definitely have a more dedicated following like people who find you organically like they really latch on to your to your music and end up like becoming those hardcore fans i mean i saw that i saw that post you had about that the bearded dude who's like always at your shows like that like that guy like that's what i'm talking about like people like that or you can't you can't replace that no, no, and and that's those are the people too that are gonna come to your shows and they're they're gonna you know buy your stuff for life and they're gonna love you and support you and and be there for you and those are the people that you really care about you know mm-hmm. not there's you know some people are gonna hear you on the radio and they're gonna hear that song and then they're gonna forget about you but I I had I'm there for the for the ones that are like they hear it and then and then they're like i understand you i feel something with this and and they and they're there for life and like the bearded guy paul who i finally got to meet <laughs> who that's, is amazing. that's awesome yeah i mean that's that's very cool and I, i've seen you um like you've done some collabs recently too like you did one with diplo which i thought was like 
an interesting one. And he's an interesting guy because he's also done, like Sturgill Simpson been, has been on one of his songs recently. I was like, man, that's a wild, like, Oh, yeah, <laughs> he's, there. he's, Diplo's really cool. He, uh, you know, he, He's, he's really, yeah, because, you know, he's done, like, the, he had the stuff with Morgan Wallen and stuff, too. Like, he did, I guess this is his, uh, you know, he had that first kind of, like, country remix record. And then he just, I was excited to, you know, be part of the, the second one that he just put out. But he's, he's a great guy. Yeah. I have this theory that I always try to tell people. But I feel like the, I have this theory that, because I grew up in the country, so I feel like, but I live in the city right now. I live in Baltimore. And I feel like there are, like, I feel like they're so close to each other. It's like the horseshoe effect, like, where it's, like, this the inner city and the, like, complete, like, uh, redneck uh, country is, like, very close to each other. Like, they love shooting off fireworks. They love riding dirt bikes and ATVs. Um, <laughs> like, sure. there's like all these like interesting similarities that are the same. And I have a theory it's why country music and hip hop work so well is because there's like, there's like this kind of like outsider perspective in a way. And yeah. I think there's just like always like a lot of potential there to kind of like work together. And I like that it's happening more. Which I mean, rappers are some of the greatest poets i mean oh like, yeah like, you know they everything that they can rhyme and put together is just that's that's so much talent in that well that's what i love too is like there's yeah um like the artistry and poeticism in hip-hop um whether that's jay-z or eminem or just like the the actual lyricism is definitely an art form and I feel like that's actually one of the things about country music that gets overlooked a lot is that, you know, you can, yeah, people like making fun of country music, talking about my tractor and my pickup truck and whatever. But like, if you get down to it, there's some really clever and fun lyrics in country music, like pretty much right. across the board. And yeah. I think that's, I think I 10 times out of 10, not nine times out of 10, I, I like listening to the, I'm a writer, so I like listening to songs for the lyrics as opposed to something like Coldplay, like, you know, look at the stars, look how they shine for you. It's like, I could throw that out. But like, I love that about, <laughs> I love that about both country music and uh, hip hop. Right, yeah. I gotta agree with you there, for sure. One of the songs that I think is, um, is the best song on your new album, and this is my personal opinion, so, um, is 27 Club, which is the closing track. Yeah. And, I wanted to know if you could tell me more about that because I feel like that's real. Per that's like a lot of times closing tracks are some of the most personal tracks um, on an album, I feel like, for some people. And, and I wanted to know, like, kind of if you could talk me through that song because I think it's, uh, I don't know, it just really hit me. It felt like a really special song. Yeah, so, like, it's funny because each part of, of that uh song I wrote at a different time so this wasn't a song that I sat down and wrote collectively all at one point and there wasn't really any real reason why it just so happened it was like I kind of came up with that first verse of that song several years ago and uh okay wow just playing on the guitar just just picking that first verse and then I don't know it, it I came up with like the second verse which you know I've never even actually been to the chateau. It was like just a whole like <laughs> it was a metaphorical thing for me. And, sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, just about you know I, I mentioned Wilder Days in there and how you know because people that know me now since all this have come out they look at me differently than the people that have known me before and so that was kind of the idea with that and then the night before I went in the studio. I came up with the idea for, you know, I turned 28 in December, I went into the studio at the very beginning of January, and so it just kind of hit me, the whole 27 Club thing, and I sat down and I, I started, like, writing that out, and then I was like, wait a minute, and so I just went back and I just started, some for some reason it all flowed for me, and I ended up wow. coming up with 27 Club, and I felt like that really was the missing piece for that record, and I went in the next day, and I played it for Sadler, my producer, and he was like, yep, that's going on there, and so then we made it the very <laughs> last track, and it's, I thought it was good 
to me, you know, Reckless Had Met You was the last song, and then it was just done, and so then I feel like we did a good job with that, you know, on 27 Club, and, you know, that one was a little harder to put on there, just because it felt a little, it was definitely a much more, um, you know, personal song, and it's, it's, I kind of, the way I wrote it was at almost like three separate, you know, places in my life, so it, yeah. it, it was, a, it's an interesting and very uplifting, happy song. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think that, and I think when you perform that live, I think that song is gonna rule. Like, it's gonna be so good live. Like the on and on and on part. I mean, yeah. I think people are gonna. That's probably gonna make for a good closer. I'm um, just like, <laughs> now I'm just throwing out <laughs> playlist suggestions, um, <laughs> set list suggestions. <laughs> um, I'm here but, for it. Baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I I definitely I love that song. Um, and yeah, and it's it's interesting because I feel I could tell like with this album, it's just like it's definitely elevating you to the next level and just kind of it's it still has its country roots, but it kind of just had it's just a good album all around. It's like rock, pop, like it's just a good solid album. And um, and I kind of want to ask you about that, you know, because so you're you grew up, you know, pr in a pretty rural town. So how is that? Um, like moving to Nashville and just kind of like the, you know, getting the fame that you're getting now where it's like bigger crowds, bigger people dealing with, you know, I don't know, just bigger people in general, celebrities and whatnot. How does that, how's that feel coming from a small place? And like, how do you deal with that? Yeah. I mean, I, I am pretty introverted, uh, mm. pretty introverted individual. And it's, it, you know, which a lot of artists are, you have to go out and be an extrovert and you, you very much enjoy like performing and playing, but then you kind of yeah. have to retreat for a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you know, the, the attention sometimes is it's, it can be a little, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, I've been very fortunate as far as like meeting people that I am very selective with who, you know, I, I let in my camp and who, who I'm around, and you, and you really have to be. Fortunately, everybody that I work with, um, they're great. And, and I've built a very, like, safe bubble, and I feel very good about that. And, you know, the very – I think that part of that comes down to the very first person I met out here was Sadler Vaden, and that's my producer. And mm -hmm. if, if Sadler vouches for you, you're a good person, and, and you're someone oh, cool. you, you want around, and, and that's – just so important you know in this yeah. in this industry to have people that have your back um you know and i feel that that way with the with the label and everybody like you know it's a big misconception that you get with a label and they make you do all this stuff and it's like mm, 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 i don't really do anything unless i want to and if, if yeah. you try to make me do anything i'm gonna complain about it and I'm, they just don't <laughs> you know they don't push they don't push me to do things that i'm not comfortable with um mm -hmm. I have, so far so good I haven't had to deal with that and and yeah you know growing up like where I grew up you know things are I mean much different I, I mean especially out in Nashville there's more than three restaurants open so that, <laughs> right that, yeah that, stuff like that you know but <laughs> I, I love very much going back to where I'm from it makes me appreciate the simplicity of where I grew up and mm -hmm you know, how all that, that really shaped me. And I think that if I grew up somewhere else, I wouldn't be writing the same way. I think that I really gravitated towards writing and doing that because that's what I had, you know, yeah. and that's, that's what I kind of, you know, yeah, I gravitated towards that. And I'm, and I'm very, I'm very blessed with where I grew up and, and how that shaped yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's something special about just growing up, you know, in a small town and just kind of everyone knows what's going on what's happening who bought the nearest farm or whose farm you know what the crops are looking like stuff like that you know what i mean like i was up like i was at my grandma's house a couple weeks ago and just you know my uncle comes over and just like an outsider would think this is the most boring stuff in the world that everyone's talking about right now but it's something about that just someone coming over sitting on the porch talking about what's happening i don't know it's just like special man that that's you know that's the thing that, that I, I love just, and I'll, I'll do that a lot. I'll go home and I'll, I'll go sit on my neighbor's porch and we sit out there and they drink sparkling water with me and we, <laughs> we just talk about stuff and random stuff that's going on and then go watch baseball and have dinner together. And it's just such a, uh, it feels, it feels really good, you know, to be able to like do that. And those are the moments that you, 
that you got to look for in life that you just feel like a lot of peace and happiness and yeah, so definitely. it's very much the good moments yeah, for sure. All right. Well, so I don't want to keep you too much longer. So uh, another question that I want to ask you, um, and this is one of our trail reviewers, Matt, is a huge fan of yours too. So he wanted to kind of throw something out there. And um, so you've toured with a lot of awesome musicians and played with or toured or played with from Jason Isbell to, you know, Tyler Childers, to Lucero, um, all the all kinds of bands and artists. So if you could assemble like a power team to play at floyd's uh country store on a friday night just like just like who would you throw in there in a mix like there's like five people uh well chris stapleton for sure um him chris and his wife morgan because they're both phenomenal um i definitely have lucero you know ben nichols in there Mm. uh bj barham from american aquarium oh yeah for sure uh I'm a big uh, fan of Evan Felker from from Turnpike, so that that would be oh nice one. And uh, I really I really like shovels and rope. That would oh, that yeah. would be one to throw in there. So that's the, a good one. The cats are great as well. Okay, I think that's a pretty solid lineup. So yeah, yeah just let us I know. Think I few people out for that one. <laughs> yeah, just let us know when you're gonna put that together and uh, give us a heads up warning so we can buy the tickets and we'll be there. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to have probably some. Uh, those are gonna be some expensive tickets because I think you can fit about <laughs> maybe maybe a hundred people in that room. <laughs> yeah, right. so it might be right. some pricey tickets for this festival, but uh, we'll. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll talk. Your manager in the room. We'll get her. I think she, if yeah. she hears it, we'll make it happen. Yeah, get the get the checkbook out now. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all right. So, since we are a shoe review site, I wanted to ask you what kind of what brand or like what running shoe you prefer you like to run in. Yeah. So I I've got Brooks. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with all my Brooks. I don't know which. I don't even know where mine are at. I kind of go back and forth, but, uh, you know, I've got, I like a lot of the ghost, Brooks ghost. Um, okay. So, so you're a traditional, traditional runner there. I got you. Yeah. I, I've, I've not had any, uh, any issues at all when I've, when I've used Brooks. So those, I those mean, are my go-to. So that's a good, that's a good plan. If you don't have any issues, if it ain't broke, yeah. then don't fix it. Right. I think, you know, there, I have friends that are, you know, they'll, you know, have Hoga and everything too. And I've just, I've Brooks, my, my feet have been great. I've not had any problems. So I was like, I'm not yeah. going to go change it up. I'm going to stay exactly <laughs> where I'm at. And yeah. Um, for a trip, even what do you wear for ultras though? Yeah. I've been, I'd use the Brooks trail shoes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So I yeah. have the, the road run, you know, I use some for the road and then I have some for, for, cool. uh, for the trail. And I'm, when I'm lifting, I go use, I use no bull, uh, okay, they're yeah. shoes, and so that's what I use for lifting. And so, nice. I, have, I have too many freaking pair of shoes too. Oh, so I that, feel yeah. <laughs> it makes traveling a little. It's like I gotta have my lifting shoes. I gotta have my running shoes. I gotta have my stage shoes. I gotta have my yeah. going out shoes. So, a lot of shoes on that bus, and all the guys have like one pair of shoes. And right. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's kind of hard to pack. You know, all the first off shoes don't pack well, and then you throw in a pair of like. Doc Martin boots doesn't exactly work too well either. No, I'm packing. <laughs> oh, I hate it. <laughs> cool. Well, all right. I think that's uh, pretty good, and I think we can uh, wrap it up on that. Thank you so much for coming on here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's it's nice to be able to talk about health and all the other stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, Definitely. thank you. Well, I wish you the best on your new album. I know it's going to hit. It's I'm stoked on it, and I'm sure people are going to love it. So, and that comes out August 24th, I believe. Is that, did I get that date correct? 25th? 25th. Close. 25th. Okay. Was, gotcha. You know, and they were here to tell me because I would have been like, yes. <laughs> I had to look. <laughs> <I> nice. <knew. laughs> yeah, nice. All right. Awesome. So, all right, Morgan Wade, thanks for coming on the podcast. Really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man.